word. Get out of here, Brian. <laughs> ah, fuck! <laughs> Got our intro. Uh -huh. <laughs>Youtube, what's going on? If you're new here, my name is Roger. I own a company called QVO Tactical where we make holsters and gear and also film content for this channel. Today is Thursday, lots of stuff getting assembled. We will talk about this in a second. Brian and Des are over here goofing off. What's going on, Brian? What's going on? <laughs> hey Des, check out her cool sweater. Oh, yeah. I'm also on my second cup of coffee. <laughs> Let's see the front. Old Saint Nick going dark. If you want to pick one of those up, link is down below. Um, yeah, check them out. They're pretty cool. Even the, I don't know if you can see it here in this camera, but even the text that we use is like Christmas light text and it shows our company name. So yeah, a design we came up with, put it on our Teespring account. If you want one, check it out. It will definitely get the conversation going at your company holiday Christmas party. Uh, anyway, lots of stuff been going on this week. Like I said, let's talk about this. So, new video coming up soon. If you guys are on my Instagram, I had to go get my fingerprints done today because I need to manufacture this into an SBR lower. So, when that's done, we can put the full build together for something I am super excited to show you guys. Uh, I've been doing some work with Battle Arms. They are a local company here. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with them. If you are not, please check out their social media stuff because they make some of the coolest looking stuff around. Uh, our buddy Paul that works over there, you guys might remember him from the last couple videos, um, <clears throat> took him up to the my old police range uh, yesterday to demo a T&E for those guys. So hopefully if you're Las Vegas Metro and you watch this channel and you want to carry some stuff from Battle Arms, they do have a new um, patrol rifle coming out and the T&E is now taking place. So hopefully that passes and gets approved so you guys can run those on your approved roster. But anyway, uh, lots of stuff going on. I put this out on my Instagram a couple days ago, and I figured we haven't done one of these, so let's get to it. Here is the Q&A. All right guys, so I figured I would do this while I am working in the shop, assembling and folding and drawing and doing all this crazy nonsense. But, questions that you guys asked here on Instagram. Let's see, uh, Robbo Lockhart, what is your favorite AR pistol length and setup? Uh, probably anything 10.5. Um, I mean, I really dig my American Defense guns. The 2A stuff is super light. To me, 10.5 is like the optimal length. It lets you go out and do a class with guys that are running full size, but at the same time, um, to me, is compact enough for doing room clearing. So that, to me, would be the ultimate for like classroom, outside, home defense. But yeah, I'd go anything 10.5 um, that you feel comfortable running. And setup-wise, uh, some type of weapon light, whether it be cloud defense, surefire, mod light, whatever you guys want to run, and some type of optic uh, for me. I really like the EOTech because of that 65 MOA dot. You get the single dot and then the round circle, so it gives you a reference point for 50. We zero at 50, so 50, and then the crosshair below is seven yards, so works out well. All right, next question. Doug the Tank, what made you choose to do holsters as opposed to other products? Uh, I used to do some plain clothes stuff on the Las Vegas Strip, and while I was doing that, a lot of the gear and stuff that I was buying, just I would have to trim, cut, sand, make kind of fit to the contour of my body and what I wanted, so one of my partners on the department was like, hey man, you should start making this stuff, and that's what led to QVO. Doug the Tank has another question. How hard was the choice to leave the stability and insurances that come with working for the police? Um, honestly, I dealt with that decision for probably a year. Um, you know, obviously the stability of your pension and security of a job and the time that I had vested uh, overall with the local government here between the law enforcement side and the uh, government admin side, I have 11 years. Um, but I just looked into it. I talked to PERS, which is the Employment retire Retirement System here, and I still get a portion because of the years that I have and I was vested. And on top of that, my insurance to cover me with the same coverage was only 300 bucks a month. So honestly, that made the jump super easy. Um, working for yourself has led me to have the life that I want. Like my work week last week was three days training on the range with some law enforcement guys and some military guys, going to a Foo Fighters concert, and then going to a hockey game. Like. That's awesome. That that to me is the dream job. So, yeah, and this job pays way better than the government. So, all right. So sorry about the noise, but just kind of got to deal with it. Uh, Shaun of the Dead asks, will a light bearing Glock 34 holster work with all other double stack 9mm Glocks? Yes. Um, as long, yeah. So if you're gonna if you want to run a multitude of guns, order the 34 because I run 34 and back. 
in 9 and 40. Uh, let's see. F stops. What is the difference in a Glock 19 made in Austria versus USA? No idea. Um, another one for F stops. How much slide to frame play should a Glock 19 have? Some have more than others. Honestly, man, I have no idea. Um, I would definitely hit a Glock. Uh, not trying to be a smart ass. I just have no idea to answer your question, and that's where I would go to get the answer. Encore RA. Why haven't these people watching your videos joined the Patreon squad yet? No idea. That's a good question. All right, so POTUS20 has asked a question that a lot of people are asking, so I'll just address it here. Why did you leave law enforcement? Uh, a few reasons. Uh, I was dating somebody long distance who I actually moved to Santa Cruz, California and got married to. Um, that didn't work out, so I ended up getting divorced and I moved back to Vegas and got offered a big position with the local county government here for elected officials. And yeah, that's it. Uh, I still work really closely with my old apartment. Like I said, I was just up at the range yesterday doing a T&E. &E. Um, so yeah, I mean, I still get to hang out, do stuff, train with the guys, so definitely fun. But um, honestly, had I not left law enforcement, QBO would not be where it's at. So yeah. Angel Barreto asks, why not ship to Puerto Rico? Uh, honestly, man, our shipping stuff is set up for only US, and on top of that, dealing with returns out of country is just a big pain that we don't want to deal with. Torrentator asks, what made you be done with being a cop? Just address that. Torrentator also asks, are there any future plans to expand QVO? Um, yes, always want to expand. However, I like to do it controlled. That way we don't get ahead of ourselves. Torrentator, not a question. Just appreciate the hell out of your product and content. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Uh, Dalton731, I'm getting into the world of black rifles. What 5.56.223 ammo do you recommend? Um, I shoot Ventura, Ventura Munitions. They sell some awesome ammo that I have had a lot of good experiences with at a fair cost, so I would definitely check them out. Uh, what made you and your family want to make holsters as a company? Love the holsters, by the way. Um, well, my family is not involved. Um, for those of you who know me personally, I'm not really close to my family, but for me, uh, I started making holsters just because I found the need. I was making stuff for myself and then it turned into people and friends wanting stuff to what it is now. Um, so yeah, Dante, that's that's how that came about. Um, let's see. D Marina, will you be making any holsters for 1911s, 2011s, or the XD full-size Mod 2 with light options? 1911s and 2011s have the X300. We have no plans on ever putting our lineup to include the XD. It's just not popular among our customer base. Um, what did I do before I started QBO Tactical? I was a police officer. I worked in government administration here locally for the county officials. Um, I've been a real estate agent. I've done other entrepreneurial things. Uh, done a lot of things. But my background that pertains to QBO uh, would most likely be the law enforcement stuff, the shooting instructor stuff, that stuff. What started me in the holster business? Already covered that. Thoughts on the 22 long rifle pistol as a trainer, example, the new Glock 44. Um, for me, I get it, there's a market for it. So to me, Glock is the apple of firearms in our industry. They are they are apple in the 2A industry, in the firearms industry. Um, they'll make a product that we all say we don't want and we'll all end up going to buy it. Uh, me personally, I don't have interest in a 22 long rifle. However, when you shoot a 22 long rifle suppressed, it's super fun and addicting and really cheap. So yeah, I could see people going that route for sure. Um, there's gonna be somebody out there running a Glock 44 with an RMR suppressed and some crazy rolling three uh, rolling special looking setup. So we'll, we'll see it. I'm, I'm sure. Ryan, you asked what made you decide to start a Kydex company. Talked about that. When are Glock range kits going to be restocked? Mountain Hood. Uh, we try to restock things on Friday, man. But as you see, we're kind of just swamped. So no, no ETA. Uh, Alan Cho, what would be a good first light for my Glock 19? Um, depends on what your purpose is. Um, for me, I like X300 on Glock. I prefer the TLR1 controls. Uh, my CZ, I prefer the X300. The controls work better for me because of the grip angle. But there's plenty of good lights out there. Uh, if you're going concealment, I recommend the APLC from Enforce. It's super small, uh, compact, easy to conceal. As well as, I want to try the new TLR7A. Those controls, I have one on order, so um, that might be a good option. But just depends on your purpose. Um, there, there's a lot on the market. If, if you're trying to go cost efficient and you want to try something out first, uh, the PL Mini Series from Olight or the PL Pro, try those out too. Yezin Washahi, when using any holster, is normal to see some wear on the front of the slide? Yes, using any gear, it's going to be normal to see wear and tear, um, especially if you're running aftermarket stuff or Cerakoted stuff. If 
metal and plastic rubbed together there is wear most of the time with like the Glock finish you can just rub it off with your thumb but yes it's normal to see wear and tear Carson Carey asks how can I find your episode of cops good luck <laughs> Can you ship to Guam? No, we only ship within the U.S. Do I practice dry fire drills, art box? Yes, every day. Uh, Crosspoint holsters, do you offer holsters to people for reviews? Good question. Um, yes, I do, if the content makes sense. Um, I don't care so much about your following. Does that help out? Of course, yeah. If you have a huge following and you put together good content, I'm more than happy to uh, work together to get exposure on both parts. However, I've had people that hit me up with a huge following. However, the way they put their content together just doesn't, it's not a good fit for what I want and what I want our product to be involved in or they're portrayed as. Um, for me, I like informational videos. I like people who um, have a background in shooting and have been carrying guns for a long time. That way that expertise goes into the review. Um, I like somebody who understands the construction of how things are made or asks questions about it. And I like videos that are entertaining and informative. Um, one of the reasons I started creating my reviews the way that I do them is because I wanted uh, reviews like that out in our industry, out in the YouTube interwebs to uh, be available. So yes, I do send out holsters for review, um, but I vet those people. I check out their content and I've had people hit me up where I enjoy their content and I work with them. I've also had people hit me up where I look at their content and just flat out tell them, hey guys, it's just not a right fit. It's not something I'm interested in. To me, there's nothing wrong with being transparent and honest. So um, I guess one of my biggest pet peeves, when I, I, I reach out to companies all the time asking and acquiring about getting stuff for a video review and I get it, your business, if you don't want to send something, I just appreciate the response of, hey, we're not interested. Um, nine times out of 10, I'm still going to buy the product because I want it to be in the review video. But if I'm going to be getting exposure for myself and the company, I'm definitely going to reach out and ask if they want to support the channel by offering up that product. And that's why I do the same when people reach out to me. So that that's kind of a long answer, but I, I believe it does answer your question. All right, Pete 412 what is the real reason why the Olight PL Mini 2 is not an option at all for your holsters? All right. So here is that light, the PL Mini 2. Everybody that asks us, oh, can we just send ours in? We, ha we have the light, that's not the issue. The issue is that sliding mechanism you just saw right here. So if you order this light, maybe I can get it on this gun right here. If you were to order this thing, say you like it here, but then maybe I like it like this, or maybe somebody else likes it because they have a bit larger hands they want it all the way out there there's no way for me to make a universal holster that's going to accommodate all of those different positions with the sliding mechanism um, and having to explain that and then get that across to other customers uh, just isn't going to work for us it's going to lead to in my opinion a lot of people wanting to return the product for something that we're not able to control so that is why we do not add this light to the lineup Rook 601, what is your go-to brand for an AR build? Um, it depends. I really like the Aero Precision M4E1 lower. It is a forged lower that has a lot of the same features as a billet setup and the cost is really good, especially if you can get them on blem sale. I think you can get them for like 65 bucks when you get the blemish ones and then just go get it Cerakoted or, don't, or just don't worry about it because you're gonna beat it up anyways. But I have some cool builds with Aero M4E1s and Geisley rails. Um, the 2A setup that I mentioned in one of my videos, you can pick up their Palouse, uh, their Palouse Light for, uh, Forge Receiver Set, which is all machined out really nicely lightweight for like 235 bucks plus 15% off if you use the code in the last video. Um, their billet setup is even cooler. I really like that, the Balios Light. So, and then now Battle Arms makes some awesome stuff too, man. So it's kind of, it's kind of really hard to tell you what my favorite one is for building an AR. Um, if you're trying to go on the cheaper side budget wise but want it to still look aesthetically cool because and honestly other than weight they're all going to function the same uh, depending on what you put into it but the m4e1 is tends to be cheaper if you go that route and it still looks really cool um, if you want something super super lightweight uh, definitely 2a and if you want something that's like it, it's made by an architectural engineer that's where battle arms uh, was started from then you know their stuff is super quality and solid made you can go that route as well so Kind of hard to just narrow it down to one. Pew Brothers, what are you most excited about for SHOT Show? Um, honestly, it's just seeing a bunch of people that I get to talk with throughout the year but don't get to hang with as much. Um, 
most of my networking and business stuff is made uh, after hours during the show floor time. I go around and try to get you guys as much content as possible. This year we'll be running about five, six deep with media, uh, microphone setups, trying to get the stuff that we want to see the most of. We'll put those in a little like 10 minute videos with three minute segments and then at the end of SHOT Show, all of the stuff that maybe didn't make the initial cut, we'll make a video on. I think that's the plan for this year. But media day, seeing some of my industry friends, um, there's not one particular product, if that's what you're getting at, that I'm like super crazy about to see. So we'll, we'll see. All right, guys, that's it for all the questions. Uh, I appreciate everybody that hopped on Instagram and dropped us a question. Hope we got to yours. If you have some more, leave them in the comments below. Maybe shoot us a DM, whichever. Appreciate it. All right, guys, that is it for today's vlog. As you can see, taking some photos. You probably saw it on the gram. Uh, cool multi-cam black over carbon fiber purple setup going out. Uh, we talked about bringing these back, so a quick shout out to Max Blumenkrantz. This is for the OZ9. It's our more discreet woodland camo over purple uh, carbon fiber. Max, super cool color combo, man. Even cooler gun. I really dig the OZ9. I hope you enjoy yours. Thank you for your order and the support. Guys, that's it for the vlog. Like I said, I appreciate everybody checking out the video. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up down below. If you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing as we post new videos every week. Uh, if you want to support our content, Check out the Patreon link down below. Our Patreon squad gets first access to new content, uh, cool discounts, cool contests and giveaways. Um, like this month, I actually have the a Seahorse four gun pistol case that one of you lucky winners will get. Um, I will give more details in our Patreon Discord server. So thanks guys, see you in the next video.